John chapter 12, verses 9 through 11. Look at what it says. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there. They came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. Because, now this is, this is where the message is right here. Because that by reason of him, not Jesus, but by reason of Lazarus, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. Repeat after me. Let's say our confession. Give us the bread that we may be fed in Jesus' name. Amen. You may take your seat. I want to preach from this, uh, from this topic, the issues of a resurrected life. The issues, the issues of, the re- of a resurrected life. Yeah. Let's start out this way. Um, in order to really understand our text here, we have to, I have to give you some historical background, some context to really understand where we are in our text today. My sermon is really going to be about two seconds long. Everything else is going to be built up and, and backdrop to where we need to go. But when we look at this, Jesus is, has been on a crusade, has been on a circuit of healing. He's been healing blind, opening blinded eyes and casting out demons. And he's been doing a lot of things that only Jesus could do. He's been doing things, been the miracle worker, the healer, the provider, the one that makes ways out of no way. He's been operating in the fullness of his ministry. But while he's on his circuit, he gets some news that his homeboy, best friend named Lazarus is sick. He gets a note that he is sick. And what I find interesting is that when we typically would hurry because of this news, Jesus does the exact opposite. He responds in a weird way because what Jesus does instead instead of hurrying to end his circuit, he actually slowed down. He started to take his time. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that he stayed put where he was instead of making a rush to get back to his friend that is now sick and seemingly sick unto the point of death. What he does here is very interesting, and I hope it blesses you when I say this, that reason why Jesus has to stay put when the situation looks bad is because it's not bad enough for him to get the glory. Now, now, a lot of you get upset because Jesus does not come when you want him to. But the reason why Jesus loves to show up at the last minute is because he does not get glory when it's not bad and it's not at its worst state. Jesus loves to show up for you when everything gets to the bottom of the bottom, the low of the low. Because check this out. Watch me. He can't get glory if the situation can be fixed. He wants to take an unfixable situation and put his glory on it. Because watch this, what looks bad to you is an opportunity for him. Can I tell you and hear me as a prophet of the Lord, you are not in a bad season. You're in an opportune season. You're not in a bad season that's going to drop you off the edge of life. You are in a space that God is going to show himself in a way that you've never seen before. Let me tell you what your problems come to do. Your problems do not come as problems. Your problems do not come as punishment. Your problems actually come as doorways yes your 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 problems even though they get bad as bad can get they come as doorways watch this because you will not know the signs of god that you do not know until there is a situation that shows you that he can be exactly what you need let me prove my point you wouldn't know god could be a healer until you got sick 
day. You wouldn't know God could be a provider until the Lord had to step in and do what you didn't have the resources nor the funds to do. It takes a situation to get bad enough for him to be able to show himself in a new way. Take your seat. But he starts all the way from many verses of this chapter. He does something when y'all forgive me, I don't have no notes, so y'all know how that's going to go today. In many verses, he starts talking around the bush. He doesn't really start talking about the sickness, but he starts saying weird things like, well, this sickness is not unto this. It's actually for the glory of God. What I love, and I hope y'all can praise God when I say this, what I love that the Lord does, he never sees your situation from your perspective. What Y'all miss what I just said. He does not have to see your situation the way you see it. I know you. it looks like depression to you, but actually it's really joy in the making. He does not view your situation the way you do. He steps outside of your situation and views what he's going to make it into. And we know that all things work to. Help me. Work together for the good of them that love the Lord. Yes, he says this sickness is not unto death. He starts talking some weird situations and weird stuff. So when he enters into the town, what, his, what Martha does, Martha comes to him and says, Well, Jesus, Lazarus was sick, but because you waited so long, he is now dead. And if you would have been here, if you would have showed up when I wanted you to, he would still be alive right now. The problem I have with this, watch this. Not only Martha said this, but Mary came and said this too. Mary Magdalene says the same thing too. Watch this. Martha is known as that immature busybody. But you have Mary who's seen as the worshiper, the one that lays before his feet, pours expensive ointment on his feet, wipes it with his head. But it's funny how when the right situation situation happens even the mature believer looks immature it's funny how a situation I don't you don't know how grown you are in God until the right situation comes that's why I can't stand people who love to try to prove themselves to everybody it might just be the happenstance that the right situation ain't hit your life yet but you know what you're really made of when the right situation comes watch me you know what's really in the egg when the egg is boiling and you don't know how hard Never mind, never mind. But you have Mary, Martha and Mary, they say the same exact thing. Jesus, if you would have been here, our brother would not have died. Your friend, the one you love, would not have died. But what I love about this, what I find interesting, Sister Tracy, we think Lazarus was in the grave for four days. I find something, I find something interesting. You know, we think typically, every time I've heard this preached, I've heard people say he was dead for four days. That's not what the Bible says. Watch this. He was buried for four days. Watch me. He's buried for four days. No one dies and gets buried the same day. So now he's not just dead for four days. He's probably, no one really knows how long he was really dead. The Jewish custom says if an individual is dead for four days, there's no hope for them to come back. But what, what I find interesting, Jesus waits long enough, watch me, for the death to be documented. He waits long enough for everybody to write them off and say that this situation was not going to get better. Can I encourage you, everybody? The reason why God could not show up when you wanted to is because it was not documented yet. He needs everybody around you to say that there's no way you'll come out of this. He needs a few people to say there's no way things are going to get better for you. And watch what he'll do. He'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your I need you tell your neighbor something for me say neighbor I got a word for you today that your table is being prepared you had enough people telling you it wasn't going to work you've had enough people telling you it wasn't going to get better that's a good place to be because what God will do he'll take what they reported and say you reported it for evil but I 
may believe the report of the Lord. And the report of the Lord is, I shall not die, but I'll live to declare. Declare the works of the Lord. Take your seat. I got a little bit more ways to go. It had to be documented. Documented. Had to be documented. Had to show up at the last minute. But the problem is, these are the two that know who Jesus is, Deacon Holloway. These two are people who know who Jesus is. They know that he is the Christ. So watch me. The reason why sometimes God will show up late to you. You ever wonder why God shows up so quick for everybody else? and it seemed like he shows up at the last minute for you seemed like everybody get their blessing real quick and you still struggling and going through everybody else's marriage got fixed and mine still in shambles everybody else got the money and the promotions that they looked for and I'm still so, I'm praising I ain't cuss nobody out I ain't ran no stoplights I ain't lied on nobody and it seemed like the hell is getting blessed quicker than I am what in the world is going on but watch me when you have a relationship with God you ready he'll love you and lo he'll love you so much in order to be late because watch me we oh I wish I get a praise when I say this because when God loves you and you love God watch me he ain't got nothing to prove to you he he loved you enough to be late hey I need you to tell your neighbor he was late on purpose. And I don't know about you, but I got, I got a testimony like the old church. That if he never does another thing for me. I'm so glad that he, I'm at the point God ain't got to prove nothing else. He's made too many ways. He opened too many doors. Fixed too many situations for me to still be in the point where I got God to prove to me that he'll do what he's going to do. He's been God the whole time. The whole so he shows up late. Please take your seat. Shows up late. Shows up late. Shows up late. But watch what happens. This is a situation only for God to expose himself in a new way. Look at what happens. Martha says, Jesus, if you would have been here, he would not have died. Look what, look what, look what Jesus says. Well, well Martha, what you don't understand, he's going to rise again. He, he's going to get up again. I need you to tell your neighbor, whatever is dead is going to get up again. But look at what Martha says. Martha says, Sister Corliss, Martha says, oh, I mean, I know he's going to get up. I've read the scriptures. I've read the books. I've read what the, I've read your laws. And it said that he's going to get up in the day of the resurrection. What I find interesting is she was waiting on an event. But when Jesus was with the, the moment when Jesus, when Mary popped out Jesus and Jesus said, wow, resurrection was no longer a day. Resurrection became a person. Everything that was a day and an event, it became the person. Jesus said, you waiting on the day, but the day has come to you. I am the resurrection. I thought I would have had a praise more than that. What I expected to come in a day on an event, all I had to do was get Jesus. And I don't have to wait on the day. If I get him, I have the resurrection. He, said, he says, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. You waiting on a festival. You waiting on a day. You waiting on a church service. You waiting on an event. But I think I, I could be in my shower and the resurrection can step into where I am. He is is the resurrection yes he is he is the resurrection but watch me what I find interesting now is that when he shows up Mary then comes and says the exact same thing the mature believer says well Jesus if you would have been here uh, Lazarus would not have died look what Jesus said I love what Jesus does watch this he says show me where he is because as long as you hide it God will never heal it he said, show me where it is. Show me where that thing died. Show me where you stopped believing. Show me where you lost your faith. Show me where you lost your trust in me. Show me where the hurt happened. Show me. Because if you can reveal it, I can heal it. Show 
me where the dead thing is. They go, they go. And what I love about this, this thing tears me up every time I read it. It's one of the most powerful scriptures I've ever read in the Bible. It's one thing that blesses me every single time I get into trouble, every single time I get down and low in life. When, G, when she shows him where Lazarus is, Jesus says, the, Jesus does something very interesting. It's the first scripture we all learned, and I hope you know it. Jesus wept. Now, 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 you don't know how to praise God for that. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. He said, Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Now, now, what I find interesting is now the simple revelation to that is Jesus exposes his humanity. Yes, he is God. His divinity is Christ. But he is so much of a God that he's too hard to believe that he's a man. He's too much of a man to believe that he's God. He's so Jesus that he can't be Christ, but he's so Christ that he can't be Jesus either. He's 100% man and 100% God. And he says, I am the resurrection as God, but Jesus the man comes and cries. We have not a high priest who can't feel what I'm going through. I love that. But the good revelation to this, that's the easy one. The revelation I love about this Elder Gwen is the fact that when the Bible says Jesus wept, it actually translates to mean a word groan. Uh, let me let me let me let me let me make this a new t let me correlate this with something else. Paul said that when we pray, there are groanings and moanings that cannot be uttered. So when Jesus wept, it was not like a <laughs> no 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 no. It was more like a like a groan that came from his belly. The reason why I know that is because when he gets to the grave. He says, thank you that you've heard me. Now, when did Jesus pray for Lazarus? The only time I saw where he did something is when he groaned. Now, I'm going to get a little old school because what I can't stand about church, we love to pray cute prayers. And we love to be cute when we go before God. But there's some ugly situations where you just don't have the words to say. There's some situations that get real bad when I can't find the words to eloquently express how I feel. So I just got to go to God and say, oh! I know that's too old school for y'all. We love to be cute. But there's sometimes you just got to go down to your knees and say, oh, Jesus. I don't know the words to say, but I got a groan in my belly. I wish the Lord will raise up a groaning church. I wish God will raise up a moaning church that when I don't have the words to say, I can groan from my belly. I don't know what I'm saying, but watch me. The more I groan, he's interpreting what I don't know. The more I groan, he's into. Take your seat. I'm not there yet. I wish the Lord will raise up a groaning people. I need you to tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, bring the groan back, the groan, the groan, bring the groan back. So what I love about this, yes, they said, tell me, show me where it is. He groans, he groans. And what you don't know now, when Lazarus was buried, it was not like a six foot deep under grave. It was in the walls of a cave with a, with a stone, a boulder that was in front of it that possibly weighed hundreds upon hundreds of pounds. Mm -hmm. Hundreds upon hundreds of pounds. He says, one thing I need you to do, before I work this miracle, Elder Williamson, before I work this miracle, I need you to roll the stone away. Now watch me. It was not Martha nor Mary that rolled the stone. It was not Jesus, and of course it was not Lazarus who rolled the stone. He was dead. That means the only people who put the stone in front of the cave, watch me, whoever put the stone in front of the opening of this miracle were the people that didn't think the miracle was going to happen. Y'all missed it. You know what, well, let me just cut around the corner because I got about seven more minutes now. There are some people who did not believe what God was going to do for you. And they wrote you off and put a stone in front of it. But God said, before I do this miracle, because watch me, if I do the miracle with the stone there, you'll have no proof that it's done. But I want the same people that wrote the stone in it. 
remove the stone from it. I need you to do me a favor. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know who wrote you off, but they are getting ready to roll the stone away. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. They are getting ready to roll the stone away. Family that wrote you off. Friends that cut you off. Jobs that said you'll never promote. Everybody that came in your life and said you'll never progress. Roll the stone away. Yes. They said roll the stone away. Roll it, roll it. Roll it away. Take it away. Now I find something else interesting. Pastor Heath, I find something else interesting here. Because when they roll the stone away, Elder Harriet, watch what happens. Martha says, well, there's really no point in me rolling the stone away. He's been dead. He stinks now. He's so dead that his insides have decayed so much that you can smell it from the outside. Things have decayed so much. Everything, all hope has been lost. And there's no way that anything good can come from this. But I, what, I love what Jesus said because he was, Jesus got like my daddy or my mama that when I forgot what he told, they told me to do before, they would say, didn't I tell you to do what I said. He said, didn't I tell you? To do Watch what Jesus tells Martha. Martha says, ain't no way this is going to happen. Ain't no way this is going to work out. Look what Jesus said. Jesus said, didn't I tell you that you were going to see the glory of God from this? Didn't I tell Now he just told her, Sister Terry, I'm the resurrection. I'm going to bring glory out of this. But she still stuck on the situation that she forgot what he said. But I think I, I think what God is doing for you today, church, he's calling you into remembrance of what he said before. You waiting on God to do a new, give you a new word when you forgot the word he already gave you. Because whenever a war happens in your life, the war is always attached to a word. So you can always, my God, you can always trace while the devil is coming at you because he fights the last thing God said. Let me prove it to you. Jesus is baptized by John. I don't know why I'm preaching like this so early, but Jesus is baptized by John. He said, the God speaks and says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Go to the next chapter, the church. Satan comes at Jesus in the wilderness. And he says, if you be the son of God, what he was doing was he was trying to make Jesus forget the word that God just spoke over him. But I need you to lift your hands in this room and say, I never shall forget. I need you to lift your hands one more time and say, I never shall forget. I'll never forget what God spoke to me. If he said I would be healed, I got to look at the doctor's report and say he was still wounded for my transgressions. He was still bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And by my stripes, I'm already healed. I got to look at my bank account. They got negative 13 cents in it. And I got to say, you said that your children will never beg for bread. You said that you own the cattle on a thousand hills. You said he will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Look at everybody around you say, I remember, I remember, I remember. Did I tell you that I was going to do what I said? Oh, hallelujah. I, I got some more work to do. Take a seat. Take a seat. I'm still, in, I'm still in my intro. Take a seat. Take a seat. Look at your neighbor one more time. Look at your neighbor and say, didn't God tell you? Didn't God tell you? A person that is depressed is a person that forgot what God said over them. A person who is suicidal is a person that forgot what God said. Watch me, you ready? A person who don't praise is a person that forgot. I need you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I've been through hell and high water. I've lost a lot of things, 
lost a lot of money, lost a lot of family, lost a lot of friends. But what I did not lose was the word over my life. What I did lose was I, what my God. I got 99 problems, but my memory ain't one. I got 99 problems, but the word over my life ain't a problem that I have. Do me a favor. Lift your hands. Throw your head back. Open up your mouth and praise him for the last thing he said. Hallelujah. All right, take your seat. Take your seat. But what, hey, oh, someone here. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. What I love about it now is when he goes to the tomb, they open it. And what you think, you think him coming out the grave is the miracle. No, no, no. He stinks, which means everything in him has decayed. Everything in him has shut up. But all he had to do was say, Lazarus, come forth. And watch what happens. What the word first had to do was speak and pump his heart again. And then the heart made blood run to the rest of the things. He was brain dead, but the brain had to open back up. But watch what he does. He could not say, come forth. Because he is the resurrection. If he would have just said, come forth. A whole bunch of dead men and women would have started walking out of their graves and coming forth. But watch me. This is why I'm so glad that what the Lord told me to tell you. While I was on the way here from the airport, he said, tell them. I'm getting ready to give them a personally tailored miracle. This miracle, your neighbor can't get it. This miracle, your family can't get it. But this miracle has your name on it. I need you to tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, what God is giving to me, you can't get it. But what has my name on it, it's already mine. It's tailor-made miracle. It's a custom-made fit. It's a touch. He says, Lazarus, come forth. And here comes a dead man walking now, Brother Holloway. He has been dead for a long time now. Skin is probably decayed now. Skin is probably rotting. Ain't nothing good looking about him. But when he comes out the grave, he don't come out looking like a dead man. He come out looking like he got a new body. Because if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And why am I preaching like this? And the whole all things are made new. Do me a favor, look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, you don't understand my real testimony. I really should look like what I've been through. But all it took was for God to call me one time. All it took was for God to call my name one time. And when I responded, I walked out of my grave. I walked out of my sin. I walked out of my struggles. And I came out as a new man. But look what he says. Look. I got I to gotta calm down. But look what he says here. He says, now what I need you to do to all that did not think he was going to come out of this grave walk up to what you think stinks and take off those grave clothes can I tell you something your grave clothes are not your responsibility it's the response my god it's the responsibility of everybody that documented your death it's the it's the responsibility of everybody that documented your demise. They loose him and let him go. But here's my message now. All that is my intro. When he comes out of the grave, hey, the next chapter we come that there. They're eating dinner now. They at them, them restaurants in Atlanta, you know, the one we talked about. They, they at they eating. Jesus is eating dinner now. And watch me. It ain't just Jesus that's eating. But Lazarus is sitting right by him. Lazarus is sitting right beside him. 
the one that was just dead is sitting there eating with him is sitting at the table along with him now what I love about this watch me they had a hit out on Jesus they wanted to kill Jesus they wanted to stone Jesus they wanted to get rid of Jesus because too many people were being changed too many people were being delivered too many people were believing in him but now the chief priests the Pharisees are looking now and they said well I don't know if it's going to be good if we kill Jesus because watch me now I need to tell you how Lazarus became enemy number one how Lazarus became the one who had to deal with the issues of a resurrected life because now Jesus is the resurrection Jesus is being changed and he's changing the whole region but now if we kill Jesus and keep Lazarus alive we got somebody who is the proof to who Jesus was and the issue with the resurrected life is that you can get rid of Jesus but you can't get rid of my testimony you can get rid of Jesus but you can't get rid of what he did to me because oh my god I need you to do me a favor look at a neighbor Professor Jordan I'm finna get on your I'm finna get on your case do me a favor look at a neighbor and say neighbor my name might be one thing but today my name is proof I am the proof to who Jesus is you can get rid of the gospel you can get rid of Jesus but as long as I'm still alive the message of Jesus is still that he can heal the message of Jesus is still that he can deliver I don't have a praiser yet it's because you ain't seeing yourself as Lazarus there's some people that tried to kill you off because of your testimony they tried to hold you back to who you used to be they tried to hold you back to your grave clothes but I came with a word today that you might have to deal with people slandering your name but there's still a word over your life that we overcame by the blood of the lamb that's Jesus and the word of my testimony that's what he did for me you can take out Jesus but you can't take out what he did in my life I looked at my hand they look new man this old school I looked at my feet they did too oh what a wonderful change that has come over me do me a favor look at your neighbor neighbor look at him say neighbor I don't know about you but I was in a grave I was dead tell your neighbor say neighbor you really don't know my full testimony you don't know the graves that God had to put me out of and if you don't believe in Jesus that's all right look at me I am the proof to what God can do I am the proof that you can be dead but when God calls your name he calls you out of darkness into his marvelous light nudge your neighbor nudge him with your elbow and say neighbor say neighbor after today I know enemies are on your case I know enemies are trying to make you lose your testimony but after today your name will be evidence your name will be proof because God is giving you a tailor-made miracle God is giving you a custom-made miracle your name is Lazarus he called you out of the dead rolled away your grave clothes and now you're seated in front of your enemies that want to take away your testimony they want to take away your testimony that God can heal take
take away your testimony that God brought you out. But after today, even though you got enemies coming against your resurrected life, they can't stop your testimony. Because from your testimony, God getting ready to take you higher. Do me a favor. Lift your hands and lose yourself. If you really remember what God brought you out of, if you really remember what God pulled you out of, do me a favor. Lift your hands. Throw your head back. Open your mouth. And if your name is Lazarus, give him an alive praise. Go, go. I got to go. Because I'm real tired right now. But I feel strength coming to everybody that got a testimony. I feel like what God is getting ready to do. You know what? Do me a favor. Everybody real quick. Take your seat. Take your seat. Take your seat. Take your seat quick. I want to tell you that your seat represents the tomb that people put you in. Your seat represents the grave clothes that they try to put you in. Your seat represents every place that God wanted to bring you out of. But it represents where everybody thought you were going to be stuck to. It represents every place that people never thought you would come out of. But do me a favor. If you're glad that God brought you up, if you're glad that God gave you a testimony, jump to your feet and walk out of that grave. 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 And walk so that everybody will see that you were dead. It was documented. You were sick. It was documented. You were broke. It was documented, but God, God brought you on, God brought you on, and I'm seated in heavenly places with him. I'm seated in heavenly places, and I can't come down, because I have testimony and because I have a testimony no weapon no weapon a kitchen shall be able to prosper you ain't got to worry about going back you ain't got to worry about people killing you cause any man that be in Christ. Ah, he is new creature. Great clothes. No, no for me. Great clothes. Can't hold me. Cause I am. I am a new creature. Lift your hands and praise God. Like you are alive now. Go. I said praise him. Hey. Like you have. Oh, rise up. Wet it.